all right then guys welcome to this train sim tv video this is mark today we're taking a look at the dovetail games class 6 to the br train load class 60 that's just been released as i record this video been needing a new 16 ts for quite a while so let's see what this is all about uh, i have had a little play with it and uh, you know faff about sort of uh, before i come to record this video we're running one of the included scenarios which is the 6a12 roberston sidings to feel merco sidings you get the scenarios that you get are included for the um south wales coastal unbranded route so that's where the scenarios are for on this route and this is one of them the courier scenario 6a12 so on the screen it's well it's on the screen it said something that i didn't rewind the video if you want to see what that's like I, I ain't going back out to do that so basically we're getting a train ready here uh we're at landor looks like the engine was a bit quiet then uh we're at landor and we're going to set this cab up which uh I thought that the uh, panels in here were more orange core on a 60, but maybe not. I mean, I don't really know. I, I, before I start this video, 60s are something that I don't really know all that much about. They're not local, they have massive interest in. But I thought I would come and do this video anyway. So let's have a, a little look at the model while we're waiting. It looks decent enough, doesn't it? The uh, actual model itself. I'm not blown away by it. I like the detail in here. It's a bit angular and everything, but I'm not I'm not blown away by this to be honest. But it looks decent. Yeah, it looks reasonable enough, doesn't it? Like, there's something with the front end to me that don't look quite right. But I don't know what it is. It was something with the, the sort of shape of the nose. Um, but you know, now I'm seeing it more. You know, looking at it more fresh eyes. I'm not seeing it as much, so maybe it was just uh, one of them things. I'll try and get these this cab sort of started up here. Might have to look in the manual in a second. Get some wipers on. Um, right. Oh my god! Was that... That's lights off. I thought the lights weren't on, they actually were. That's the light. What are we doing here? We've got a candle behind there or something. What? 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 Remember that traffic inspector Greaves is travelling in the rear cab. He'll light at Cardiff during the Negro swap. Make sure you do not exceed the train to maximum speed or else. Ooh. Threatening behaviour. Um, we're sat at land or we've still got a red signal, so I don't know what. That was the HST coming. But yeah, I really don't know what this is all about. I mean, you look at that from a distance, you can't even tell they're on. That's shocking. Aren't they the wrong colour as well? Wouldn't they be more of a yellow colour? That's a very. In fact, look at the textures on them. Wow, that's pretty poor. Not gonna lie, that is pretty poor. Um. Other than that on the model, to be fair, it's not too bad. There's one comical point that I was going to bring up, and that's the inclusion of this livery. Which, as far as I know, was carried on 60.010 for one day only. Not in service. Which is fair enough, I understand putting it in your pack for the sake of putting it in your pack sort of thing. It's, I mean, I've seen USA liveries in the Voyager and stuff from JT. It's not, like, unbeknown, but... Uh, it's a bit strange to then place it in a prominent place like that, but, well. And obviously we've got um, Ron here at AI, such as the one that's just going past there. You know, I, ideally that would be an Intercity HST. Uh, and I'm going to go on to my, my points about this. I'm not going to make this a long video. I'm not driving the entire 70 minutes an hour. It's going to be like a 20, 30 minute video. But I'm going to go into about why we're using GWR HSTs and train road livery 60s seems a bit bizarre but anyway can we open windows and stuff yeah we can open windows sounds like somebody's just getting a little hammer and hammering it on the desks yeah very loud I've got a cab light. 
What other things have we got to play with in here then? Oh, we're still waiting. Got instrument lights. They're, I mean, well, they're not really instrument lights. They just sort of light the number up, don't they? Not, not out of this world. I don't know whether slow speed control works or not, to be honest. Uh, I've got the manual up, so... You know, the sensible thing, and not the Tom thing to do, would be to have a look in the manual and see if slow speed control is mentioned. Uh, it does mention slow speed control, but it kind of doesn't tell you how to use slow speed control. Which, at that point, you might as well not even bother putting it in manual, to be honest, because freaking knows how you're supposed to use it. Now, right, let's get some brakes released. <laughs> Loud release sounds. Right. Now, my biggest issue with this, a pre-warning, is the sound. So I'm going to start with in, we're in off, we're in idle at the moment. That sounds reasonably good. I'll shut up for a minute. I'll turn the game sound up so you can hear it. Now we're going to notch one. Or on. The horn's not terrible. I've heard worse. So in the on position we've got up point two hundred and eighty seven amps, we're not really doing no no, no sound change. We're going to notch one. Or notch two. Downward spiral from my mood has started to go downwards. So if I close my eyes now, close your eyes, guys. Does that sound like a class 60 to you? Because to me, that sounds a bit like a 59. And then see what you think it sounds like when I put it into full notch four. Oh, and of course we're wheel slipping because, you know, that happens. It's not as bad as the JT one for that. So, my thing with the sounds is... Well, what what the hell are the first of all? Because that, to me, sounds like the original Cooge turning these bloody wipers off. Christ. Um, it sort of sounds to me a bit like the old JT60 did. Um, not the JT60. No, the the... the wheel slip issue is like the JT60 the sounds are like the bloody QGU HST is what that sounds like to me I don't know about you guys but that's just a bit, a bit stupid really um, you know I don't expect the DTG add-on to sound like an AP add-on I don't expect anyone's add-ons really to sound like an AP one um, in recent times I think certainly in Steam Loco was the only one that's come close to that sort of quality really is Bossman Games um, So, that's loud. Very loud. So, yeah, I mean, um, I don't understand that. Why we've got Cujo HST sounds on here. Or Valenta HST sounds. It doesn't sound anything like a 60. And as I say, you don't really expect DCG to sort of come out and pull a blinder and do sounds that are better than what AP would do because they never have and they never will. It's not what they're aiming to do. Much like JT, they're sort of aiming for a, a more casual sort of market to what myself and no doubt many of you guys aren't watching here. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a weird one. Why you would end up with that sort of sound. Because the, the other sounds, to be honest, they're not too bad. But it's completely missing that wub, 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 wub sort of sound you get from a 60 when it's firing up. You know, like this is like being punched in mouth, this is crap. There's no other way to describe it. I can't think of anything nice to say about that, that notch 3 and notch 4 sound, which is the, the sort of... You know, you're going to be abusing that, obviously, if you're powering up for them at uh, slow speed. Uh, up to notch 2, it doesn't sound too bad. It certainly sounds adequate for what you'd expect from a DTG model. But, like, beyond that, it just sounds a bit shocking. There's not really... You know, no point mincing my words about it. Now the other thing that I noticed as well with this, this, these 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 wagons come with the power. Let's just say that for starters. Um, got a green signal. And quite lovely they are as well. You know this is the TEA wagon I believe from the um, class forty pack on Trentin World. So it's the TEA wagon that came with that I believe. And I think it's a really nice model. 
To be honest, at this point in time, I'm actually happy about spending 11 99 for this wagon, uh, rather than the uh, Loco itself, because it actually looked really nice. Not sure why we've got DTG on the number panels. It's a bit of a weird one, to be honest, but... Um, the sounds are shocking, as, the, as you expect them to be. Um, but the, the wagon itself is quite nice. And what I can't understand is why we're driving this train, which is 6A12, which in actual fact in real life is 6A11. I can't find any record of a 6A12. Maybe it was a diverted one that came this way or something. Um, but this working is well known for the wonderful blue and red sort of TA wagons that he has on it. And I can't, you know, even without the branding, it would have been nice to actually see the right livery painted to the damn things. No, that sort of thing just smacks of laziness to me. I don't know about you guys watching, but that's just... There's no photos I can find of a train from Robeston to Feel with a full rake of grey TAs behind it. Let's have a... While we're going down here, I'll uh, shut up again and I'll take it up through the noises and you can hear those again. I mean, if you could see me, I ain't got my webcam on, but if you could see, I'm just sat checking my head. Like, I, I can't put into words how wrong that is. It's not even a generic sound, it's just wrong. In every single facet, it is wrong, completely and utterly wrong. If you stay below, like, notch one or two, then it's not too bad. You know, if you stay in those notches, but anything above that, you might as well forget it. You might, you might as well just turn your speakers off as a driver without listening to that. Why have I got that crap F1 stuff on? That's stupid. In fact, talking of F1, it sounds more like an F1 car than a bloody 60 does this. And, you know, I'm not going to get as wound up as I did in West Coast Mainline South video. But, because I don't really care that much about 60s, you know, in real life. I've got to care about the thing. But it upsets me to, to just have such, such a, a poor, poor effort, really. Let's be honest, it's not... It's not decent, is it, that? I can't... I defy anyone. I defy anyone. What the friggin' hell was that? Sounds like we've got kids' toy set out, doesn't it? Just sat banging stuff. But I defy anybody to tell me that this sounds like a Class 60. It doesn't sound too bad in the cab. I can't quite hear that Valenta scream. If they got rid of the scream, it'd be okay. It'd be acceptable. But that has completely killed anything positive about this model for me. I can't, I can't drive this. I simply can't drive it. You know, it might sound a bit dramatic and a bit like of the top, but I'm not going to sit and drive this crap. It just sounds really, really poor. And I'm disappointed that it sounds bad because I want this to be a successful model. I want DTG to make a load of money off this. I want them to do well. I don't know why that clicks so well when the AWS is going off. But I want them to, to be able to put something out that's really good. It's not about wanting DTG to fail. And I don't think anybody wants DTG to fail. Because if DTG fail, they fail on all of us. And we have no more simulator. Bye bye train sim. You know. Let's all spend Wednesday in front of telly or something like that. I don't know. Thursday evening. Whatever day it is, I don't even know. I don't even care. But nobody's going to succeed when you, you, you're pumping out crap like this. I can't even tell the bleeding lights are on. Look. What the? It's 
It's just shocking. It, it, it's, it's really, really shocking, that. And I, I, I'm just sad. I think sad's the only really word to describe it. The, the, those those bloody button sounds. I'm sorry, but what the, what the friggin' hell is that? Sounds like somebody's got a piece of plastic and they're just going, where's something I can eat? I can't find out. I can't find out. I'm getting pissed off. It sounds like somebody's got like a, a piece of plastic or something. They're just sort of rubbing it along the desk like with a, 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 like a, an edge on it. And it's like they're rolling it along the desk. Like doop, 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 doop. What is that? Oh, here comes the vein. Let's get the wipers ready, boys. Bang, 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 bang. I could not, I can't, I can't drive a vein scenario with that one. I'm sorry, that's just... I think the nicest thing I can say is that the model itself is alright and I hope that V-Skinners can at least do a decent job so we can use it on AI because I, I ain't going to be using this to drive on unless we get a decent set of sounds on it. If we get a decent set of sounds, it'll be alright. But the current set of sounds just kill it. It's dead in water. And of course... Oh, I'm not slowing down here. What are these brakes? It's like I'm trying to slow down a suet pudding or something. What's going on here? Right, we have got a heavy train, of course. Um, the other things is like weird sort of things about this add-on is why is it that it's set in the BR train load here with this loco when DTG, as far as I know, have got a DB license? If they're clearly running scenarios that are set in the um, BR era, uh, DTG, in set in the modern era. You know, we've seen GWR levied HSTs and stuff, so that's obviously set modern. We've seen 175s. But we've got a low code that's set in the 1990s. Of course, Class 60s were introduced between 1990 and 1993, for those that don't know. There's a hundred of them. And uh, I don't know, this pack's got some just some weird oddities. Like, we've got, obviously, because it's a BR train, we don't get GSM ammo like that. Um, and I'll be honest, I can live without that. We can have a little look around. We've got the hot plate over here. Second man horn, second man windows, and we can just have a little, you know, faff about with stuff. I know I said a bad word, I must not swear. I've already done that once though, so pretty pointless to tell myself that. Have I got the wrong headlights on? Why is that pointing towards night? Oh, wait, I've got the night headlights on. The hard work day. Um, you can't do anything with that. The tail lights, obviously, you can. So, various things you can play with, but to be honest, not a lot. Clipboard light, cab light, we've already had all that stuff on. What have we got over here to play with? No, nope, can't. Well, you can press the fire alarm test, but no happens when you do. Uh, you can't do it with a hot light, hot plate, which is fine, not with a care. Slow speed control. Be aware that you're going to be diverted to the goods line at Port Talbot to allow passengers to pass, blah blah blah. Yes, okay. Um, slow speed control. I'd like to think it works and it's mentioned in the manual, but it's only like mentioned to show a picture of what the thing is in the cab. It doesn't tell you how to use it or if it actually does exist in the in the game. We've got the train length button, which I've just pressed. That should beep uh, again twice when we get past the uh, rear. The train passes that point. What's this down? That's the heaters. We obviously can't really do it with that. These handles and everything just looks a bit naff. I don't know what it is about them. And I don't know if they're meant to look like that or not. They just don't screen quality to me. But, I mean, again, I'm, I'm, that's the train length thing. Um, you know, sitting inside it and looking at it. As a model, it's not too bad. I need to get a screenshot for the uh, cover. But I, I just, I just can't, I can't live with that sound. No, I'm sorry. I, I can't do with that. 
you know, you, you you can you can put up with some things in life, but you know, a sixty that sounds like an HST, you've got to be taking some pretty strong drugs. You've got to be taking some serious gear to uh, to accept that. And again, it's a, I say it's a drop ball, really, because the model itself looks pretty decent. You know, it's certainly not a lost cause road like that. I, I quite like the look of it. I just can't get made around the, 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 the sounds, in all honesty. I mean, again, if you're just sitting in cab, and I suspect most people probably are. Oh, the bear in mind sounds don't change when you're up at window. Um, if you just sat in cab, it's not too bad. You can just about hear that screaming noise, but only just. The horn actually is one of the better DTG ones. I'm not going to go all the way and say it's fantastic or great or all like that. You must get some HH A wagons included in this pack, by the way, as well. You do get the TAs definitely, but obviously there's HHAs over there, so you must get something like that included. Let's have a look on the star page for that. Would make sense, wouldn't it? That wiper sound, I'm sorry, but it's driving me up the wall. So who knows, maybe we're going to get another 60 pack or something, because it does say train load BR pack uh, in the name of it. Maybe we're going to see... Um, so that's that, that HHA wagon, by the way. It must come... Oh, Christ. Oh, give up. Chuck your hat at the back, car if you carry on. Um... That Freightliner wagon obviously comes with you, I think, rather than with this loco. I should have known that, but I didn't. Um, yeah, it's it's a, a bit of a weird pack again. I mean, so obviously the sixties are quite well known for you know, having a decent set of names. I'm actually gonna, I've got a book, I've got books somewhere that I can read out. Oh, Christ, I've not a lot, I've not a lot of stuff off. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to find a locomotives book um, because that will have in all the 60 names from the period that this route is set. Here we are. Class 70 there. Sounding better than the 60, and that pack came out years ago. Now, as well, it's worth saying that we are in the middle of a pandemic, so let's be fair to DTG and say, all right, you can accept that the sounds maybe aren't going to be quite up to scratch. And, and understand maybe that. You know, they won't be quite as good as you'd expect, but, you know, you don't just chuck it out because it's, you know, you think it's done and then you've got some sounds on it. You know, that's the sort of thing we saw with West Coast Mainline. So, oh, just, just, just get it out. You know, just lob it out at the door. Kick it down the street. Let somebody else worry about it. So, yeah, let's let's talk about 60 names because in this pack you get Ben Nevis, um weirdly randomly Ben Nevis and you get Florence Nightingale which you know it's quite a topical a decent choice NHS um, Covid pandemic all that you know it's quite a decent idea I, I am on board with that but absolutely absolutely on board with that so so what names that we could have had in this pack you know quite a name famous peak names and stuff 6206 Great Gable for instance Bow Fell Landale Pikes they were named after mountains a lot of them Wild Boar Fell Penny again, Ingleborough. Other ones like the Cheviot. You know, Ben Nevis, as I've already said, is a, is a reasonable one. Uh, there's other names, Helvellyn. Um, and then there was a lot of named after people, like Charles Babbage, Thomas Bernardo, William Beveridge, Florence Nightingale, Charles Darwin. Uh, and then more were named after mountains, Cross Fell. You know, all these, let's be honest... Yeah, you know, my favourite actual six name was was the Bar of Badenoch. Because it's just a cool name. Yeah, you know, that was the last that was sixty or sixty one hundred. Now I'm not saying you put all hundred nameplates, and I think you really you probably should these day and age, this day and age. 
Uh, even if they're just 2D, just get them in. Um, but to only have two. And I mean, JT one that came out, the JT Classics that came out years ago, didn't even have any nameplates in it, did it? As far as I remember. But let's remember here, guys, we're talking about that, that product is... I want to say 12 years old originally. I know I was involved with making some scenarios when the 60 Advanced came out in 2012. Um, but the original 60 was out before that. That included no names, and I think at that point it would have been considered a bit poor for not having name placing. But I don't remember there being like a big outrage about it. But I think these days, especially when, I mean, DTG you know AP and stuff like that, when you've got AP putting stuff out and other people putting stuff out, you know, all these local packs they've got loads of names on and stuff, at least pick a quarter of them, for Christ's sake. Two. You know, I don't know how to make a 3D asset, but I could probably knock two nameplates out in the day. You're telling me that people that make in this thing don't know how to put nameplates out? I imagine they could put less than a day aside and probably do most of them. It's just that... Oh, I'm with speed, I don't care. Um, it's just that sort of thing that's like... Why? Why not just go to that little bit of effort? So that it gives your loco some identity. And it, uh, this is again where it's sound like a bit weird because, like, if we really wanted to do it, like when they were a bit sort of ran a bit blank, the sixties, a lot of them sort of had no names and stuff, or don't have names in DB living and stuff like that. Then, you know, it's a lot more bland these days than it was in the days that they tried to model it. They had quite a few things on them these days, in the day that they've set this. Why have we gone back to Kuju sounds on the wagons, by the way? I swear, I, I swear they had better sounds than the Kuju on like Liverpool to Manchester and stuff. I've got this bloody loco book in my hand still. Throw that over there. Don't need that. This at the moment to me sounds more of a 58 slash 56. It actually probably sounds more like the 58 than the 58 did. It sort of sounds a mix between a 58 and a 56. It certainly doesn't sound like a 60. No chance. No chance in hell this sounds like a 60. Shall we try and get another screenshot of it? Again, I, I can't tell if lights are on. I'm going to bring this video to an end soon because there's not really else for me to cover. The pack's 12 quid, it's you know, a reasonable sort of price. And I guess this is why we pay a lot of money for AP stuff, because, the, the, you know, that extra 12, 13, 14, 15 quid, you know, for Christ's sake, it's better than this. And I've just noticed in the pictures of this loco, why the lights on the front look a lot better on DCG's pictures than what we've got. If you go to the Steam page, you will see that the lights on this loco on their page are a lot better. Why? Because you can't tell me that nobody's noticed that lights aren't on. Is this again a, a, another case of DTG not letting testers get on with testing? I happen to feel it probably is. So, I mean, I look forward to seeing some reskins of it because it'll look at least decent in some AI aspects. But I don't really care for driving it. Unless somebody can patch AP sounds onto it or something. Or, you know, low, or, you know, what the ideal thing would be is if AP came along and did his own, you know, enhancement pack. Or if Bossman Games came out and did his own pack, because he was doing his at one point, uh, and this isn't the Bossman Games one. Let's just make that clear now. This is by uh, another chap who's credited in the manual, uh, DTG, that's made it. I know there's some people that thought this was the JT one. And you can tell that it's not the JT one, because the JT one looks a lot worse than this. It looks, you know, it's dated. Christ, it's, it's, the model is probably about 13 years old, I want to say. I'm going to have to try and get some brakes in. Just put it into emergency so I can summarise here. Because I'm not going any further than this. We've been going for 29 minutes. That's more than enough. We don't need to go any further with this uh, sort, of, sort of look at it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the engine off, actually. Um, get some more screenshots first. Try to turn the engine off and see what 
see what sort of sounds we get. Come on, I can't turn. What, what, what's going on here, guys? What? What? What's happened here? Does anyone know what's happened? I can't. I can't move out. Oh. Knackered. Oh. Shut down sounds pretty decent. When it's shut down for a while, uh, when the RPM's already dropped off and everything, even though there's still sounds coming from it. Let's try and turn it back on. For whatever reason, I can't do it from the hood. I've got to press the button in the cab. So you got there, you got that wob 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 sort of sound. If you drive the AP pack, you'll see what I mean with that. Compared to this, it's a totally different game of fish. Game of fish, kettle of fish. Um, summarise, Len. Let's summarise. You know this pack. Um, for for twelve quid, I reckon it's a decent do for twelve quid. You get the wagons and you get a sixty. Twelve quid's not a lot of money. But it is it's poor. It's a it's a really poor pack. Um thank God it's only twelve quid because I certainly won't be paying any more than that. Um And I don't think it's a bad deal for it, but what I think is bad is that there's literally not really much you can use it on because it's It's set in an area when most routes aren't set. It's not even fitting into its own route that it's on here. When it could have done if it was in DB livery with the extra gubbins that it could have had. So that's a bit of a, a, a just a strange decision to only do it in BR. Fair enough if you include BR, but not to only do it in BR. Seems a bit like um, totally like out of place. My, my, my wondering with it was was whether this was going to go into the Tees Valley route on Train Sim World. If it was meant for that, even though yes I know that the Tees Valley route was set just before the 60s came out. But it's more in, in, in place than this is on, on a nine, on a 20 cents route. Certainly more at home there than it is on here. So I wondered if that's maybe what it would go in for, what they were trying to do, or what they were hoping to do. Um, but yeah, 12 quid is not too bad. The thing that I keep seeing and I keep seeing people ring up is I saw one person say that JC60 is better. I don't think it is because the model is just so old and it's pretty much undrivable at times with that wheel slip. Um... Certainly got more features on the JT one. I think that's for you know for fair to say. Um, but it's an old model. But you shouldn't be seeing anybody saying that the JT one's better. I've seen uh, quite a lot of people say that it's not not much better than the JT one. And I think maybe that's probably the more accurate description. Is it's not that much better. This model and the way it handles in game and everything is not twelve years, thirteen years, or ten years, or nine years, or whatever you want to say. It feels like it came out 10 years ago. It does not feel like it's that much more time advanced than the JT one. And it should do. I mean, it's DTG, so you kind of expect it's not going to be fantastic and everything. It's not going to have all the features and stuff, but the sounds on this, they got, the sounds are god-awful. You know, the, the buttons in the cab, they sound like somebody's got a toy kit out, you know. Somebody's gone to get the kids' toy set out at the cupboard and start just banging stuff about. Um... The notching up sounds, the, the, the idle sounds aren't too bad, the horn sounds aren't too bad, which, you know, weirdly, that's that's the one thing that DTG normally fall down on, is the horn actually here is pretty decent. Once you get above notch free, it is an absolute joke. It really is an absolute joke. I can't even put into words like how bad the Valenta scream is on this. And it's just... Poor. Poor, poor, poor. If I'm going to give it a score out of 10... four or five and that's just based on the fact that the model's pretty decent you know we can have a little closer look at it before we uh before we go off the model itself it's not amazing but it's all right 
it does. I mean, actually, to be fair, looking at some of the detail down here, it doesn't look that great. It's it's all right, but it's uh, it's not not anywhere near the sort of level that we've seen from recent stuff from DC from AP and stuff like that. But we're not. I don't think anybody really expects that. The main look at the textures are really low quality. The lights, as I said, are Christ knows what's going on with them. I ain't got the foggiest what's going on with them. And talking of fog, you won't want to be driving them through fog because you won't see them. So, yeah, I hate to not recommend something because I normally do like to recommend stuff. If you're really desperate for a 60, I recommend it, but otherwise, until somebody does something with sounds or even an enhanced microphones, at least until some of these skins come out, then I wouldn't recommend it. If sort of that sort of thing gets brought through, and if, if it had a decent set of sounds, or an adequate set of sounds, 12 quid, you get the TAs included, which are pretty decent. They're the wrong colour, but they're pretty decent. Um, you know, it's worth it at that point. I mean, the texture on these is actually quite nice. I love the weathering and everything. They look really good. For the scenarios that they're based on, they're completely the wrong colour. They should be red and blue and stuff like that, but I don't get too upset about that. I just get more upset about sounds, to be honest. I'm not sure what's going on with roof there. It looks like we've got to just black hole into an abyss with exhaust. Um, yeah, it's, it's not amazing, guys. It's not amazing. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget, you can check us out on Twitch. Tom's usually live various days during the week. Twitch.tv forward slash trade scene underscore TV. Thanks, as always, for your likes, your comments, your subscriptions. Uh, those are always appreciated as always. I hope you're all doing well. We're still in this lockdown of uh, from COVID as I do this in middle of February 2021. And uh, I do hope that everyone's doing well and hope we can all get back out soon. Um, well, thanks as always for your support, guys. See you later.